Good morning and praise the Lord, kingdom citizens. This is the day that the Lord has made, and in spite of what we are going through in the world today, we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad. And we say happy resurrection day to each of you. And we hope that as we come to celebrate Jesus, you will join us in this celebration way. beginning at verse 11. John chapter 20, beginning at verse 11. We want to thank our praise team for a wonderful song leading us in praise and worship. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angel asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. 
It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was a gardener. Sir, she said, if you've taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said, she turned and cried out, Rabboni, which in Hebrew is teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message, the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Most holy and everlasting God, our Father, we come before you now to thank you for this Passion Week. Yeah. And thank you as we come to celebrate the close of this awesome week. As we come to the time of celebration of the resurrection yeah. of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Uh -huh. Thank you, God, that you gave us your son, Jesus. Yeah. And that he lived a perfect life. And that he showed us the way to salvation. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask it now in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. As we celebrate this grand occasion. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That we might celebrate knowing, oh God, that you are in control. That's right. That is in you that we live, yeah. move, and have our being. That is because of you, oh God, that we have this opportunity yeah, to come even on the airways. We come, oh God, in our individual homes, but collectively honoring and praising you. Yeah. Because God, you are worthy. Worthy? of all of our praises. Yes, Lord, we ask now that you forgive us for our sins and our transgressions. Yes, that you wash us thoroughly from yes, our iniquities. Yes, and that you help us, oh Lord, be the people that you are looking for when you return. Yes, for, oh Lord, the signs of the times tell us that yes. you are soon yes, to return. Yes, and God, we want to be ready to go back with you Oh, Lord, that we might celebrate this resurrection in the resurrection. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for this awesome time. And, Lord, now we just ask for your spirit to rule in us. Yes. That you cover us and keep us in your God. care. Yes. That you, oh, God, show favor to the children of God. Yes. Oh, God, who honor you and confess you as Lord and Savior. Bless us now and keep us. keep us. In the mighty, the marvelous, and the majestic name of Jesus, who is our Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God.
that's love. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Amen. Good morning, kingdom citizens. It's a delight to greet each and every one of you on this resurrection morning. Yeah. For this is the day yeah. that the Lord has made. Yeah. We are here early mm. to rejoice, to give him the glory, and give him the honor that is due to him. I pray that God will continue to bless, continue to bless each and every one of you as you go through this day. Scripture was read in your hearing from the Gospel of St. John, chapter number 20, verses 11 through 18. Our emphasis for this month is church family warfare. Church family warfare. I was reading the paper a couple of weeks ago. In fact, it was April the 5th in the Sumter Island newspaper. There was a commentary that was written by Glenn Mollett. And the subject of the commentary was no Easter in the U.S. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Notice now, this is on the opinion section. Yes, sir. <laughs> no Easter oh. in the U.S. Lord have mercy. So today, I, I want to use as a thought, Easter is not an opinion, but a fact. Yes, sir. All right. Easter huh. is not an opinion, but a fact. According to dictionary.com, an opinion is an expression of a person's feelings that cannot be proven. Huh. It says, a fact is a statement that can be proven true or false. Mm. Mr. Mollett said, because of the COVID-19 virus, Many Christians will not be in their sanctuaries for Easter, April the 12th. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mollett's feelings gives him his opinion. Everyone has a right to his or her opinion. That's right. Everyone has a right to believe in their opinion. So if you want to say that there is no Easter in the U.S., you have a right to say that. That's right. But to every Christian, Easter means resurrection. Yeah. In John, the third chapter, the 16th verse, very familiar words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. My point, sisters and brothers, is Jesus didn't die for the U.S., but he died for the world. Yes. Jesus was not resurrected for the U.S., but he was resurrected for the world. You see, there are many people today who have their opinion about the meaning 
of Easter. Many people are saying there will be no Easter this year because I can't buy a new hat or a new suit. Some might say they will not have Easter this year because they cannot see their family or their friends. But I want you to know that uh, the fact is Jesus uh, uh, was, did, was not resurrected for you to have a new suit. That's right. He wasn't resurrected for you to have a new hat. He wasn't re resurrected for you to have family and friends on Easter Sunday. But he was resurrected so that you could believe that he is the son of the living God. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it that some people believe it was a fact that Jesus was born in Bethlehem? Some believe that it was a fact that Jesus grew up and became a man and he went about healing the sick and raising the dead. That's right. But when it comes to the resurrection, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an opinion for them. But I want you to know today, resurrection is not an opinion. That's right. Mm -hmm. But it is a fact. It is a fact. Yeah. Well, I didn't come today to preach about opinions. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, because an opinion is an expression of a person's feelings that can not be proven. Uh, but I come to preach and teach about the fact of our resurrected Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, it is a fact. And uh, it has been proven that Jesus is alive. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah, the Lord. In, in, in our text today, uh, that is found in John, the 20th chapter, verse 11 through 18, uh, we see the resurrected Christ manifest himself before Mary Magdalene. Uh -huh. uh, I call her uh, the sorrowful one. In other words, at this time, Mary is grieving because she cannot find Jesus. Uh -huh. Look at verse number 11, if you will. It says, Mary was standing outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she stooped and looked in. Uh, Mary was crying at this time because she was in a graveyard situation. Yes. Oh, glory, hallelujah. All the disciples left her in the graveyard. She was looking for Jesus and could not find him. She was in this graveyard situation. And I don't know whether you've ever been in a graveyard situation. Uh -huh. But when you're in a graveyard situation, it means that the people that uh, normally be with you will leave you when you get in trouble. You see, when we lose something, we look again and again in the place where we left it. Now, I don't know whether you are at that point in your life at this time, that when you lose something, that 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 uh, come, becomes a, a daily routine for me. I don't know about you. If you're not there yet, just keep breathing. Uh, you know, I walk around and say, I know I left it. I left it right there. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> Mary was hanging in the graveyard because she knew that Jesus was there. They, Mary knew where they laid Jesus. Now, uh, she cannot find him. 
Look at it, if you will. Mary didn't get an opinion from somebody about whether Jesus was in the tomb. Mary stooped and looked in for herself. Yes. Glory, hallelujah. You see, sisters and brothers, there are some times when you got to look for yourself. You got to do for yourself. You cannot depend on somebody else to do something that you ought to be doing. That's right. Mary looked, didn't depend on someone else. Glory, hallelujah. When she stood up after stooping down, she knew for herself it was a fact that Jesus was not in the tomb. The next thing I see in the text is uh, the shining ones. The shining ones. Verses 12 and 13 says, she saw two white robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angel asked her, because they have taken away my Lord. She replied, and I don't know where they have put him. Look at it, if you will. These angels were messengers from the Lord. Yeah. I don't believe that they were there coincidentally, but I believe that they were there providentially. That's right. Yes. Uh, 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 in other words, uh, these angels were there on a mission from the Lord. These angels were sent to comfort Mary in her grief. They had been sent to her uh, and her alone particularly. You see, uh, these angels were not there when Peter and John look in. Uh, Matthew says in uh, chapter 28, the third verse, uh, his face was shone like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. Yes. Well, I want you to know today when you have a situation in your life, when you have lost a loved one, uh -huh. when you have lost uh, your job, when you have lost a relationship that you had for a long time, yes, and even when you get to the point where you have lost uh, your hope, uh -huh. God knows how and when to comfort you. Yeah. Yeah. God who to send yes. to comfort you. Yes. Oh, Lord, when everybody else uh, go back home, uh -huh. when the phones stop ringing, yes, when the doorbell uh -huh. seems like it's broken, uh -huh. God knows uh -huh. how to send somebody uh -huh. to give you some encouraging words. Uh -huh. I don't know about you and they put this in front of you, but every now and then, uh -huh. I need some encouraging words. Uh -huh.
Then uh, the man asks, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? Yeah. He isn't here. He's not here. He is risen from the dead. Yeah. What a good word. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Glory to yeah. God. Yes, In the midst of your troubles. Uh -huh. yeah. In the midst yes. of your problems. Uh -huh. In the midst of your graveyard situation. Yeah. God sends a word. Yeah. Even though your prayers haven't been answered yet. But Jesus is alive. Yeah. Even though it's so dark you can't see no light. Yeah. Jesus is alive. Yes, he is. Well, we talked about the sorrowful one. The shining ones. The last one I want to talk about the sovereign one. Yes. All right. Look at verse number 14, if you will. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus. But she didn't recognize him. Verse number 14, 15 says, There woman, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Jesus asked her, Who are you looking for? She thought uh, he was the gardener. Sir, she said, If you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go. And get him. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't leave this verse. I couldn't leave this verse. And this this last phrase, Mary says, "I will go uh -huh. and get him." Uh -huh. Now, if you notice in in previous verses, she was saying, "Tell me where they put him." Uh -huh. In other words, Mary was saying it took more than one to put him. <laughs> Wherever he is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, she's in the presence of God Almighty. Yeah. <laughs> and she becomes Wonder Woman. Yeah. Help me get somebody. Uh -huh. yeah. She says, Tell me, Tell me where he is and I will. Uh -huh. Go uh -huh. I will get him. Uh -huh. I, I don't need nobody to help me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Glory, I, I, I've got enough power. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody might ask, well, Mary, uh, how you going to do it all by yourself? <laughs> and she would say, uh, all things are possible uh -huh. through God Almighty. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Mary was talking positive. Uh -huh. yeah. And if you got to do something, you want to do something, you got to be positive about it. Mary thought that Jesus was the gardener. The reason why she thought that is because nobody hangs out in the graveyard uh. after the home going service oh, but the gardener. Uh -huh. Glory, hallelujah. Uh, she said, sir, uh, if you have taken him away, Tell me where you put him. Look, look, look at Mary. She mistaken Jesus for the God. You know why? Because she was looking for a dead Jesus uh, and not a resurrected Jesus. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, when Jesus asked Mary, "Why are you crying?" and who are you looking for? She didn't recognize his voice. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But when he called her name, yes, sir. Yes, sir. she recognized his voice. Yes, sir. Glory, hallelujah. When, 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 when Jesus called her name, uh -huh. Jesus said she turned Turn. <laughs> to him and cried out, Rabbi, which is Hebrew uh, for teacher. When about that time she she reached out to hug Jesus, uh -huh. All right. to cling on, on to, to Jesus, yeah. uh -huh. and Jesus said, 
tuning in, if you're watching, and you never confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, today is your day. Today is the time that you can just bow your head and confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. And today you can be saved, yes, right where you are. You don't have to come to the church house. You don't have to be in the church house. Right where you are, you can be saved. Simply make a confession of your faith. Perhaps you watch us, listening. You just simply straight away from the Lord. You can return today by confessing that you have sinned, that you have fallen away from the Lord. Today you want to return. You can be restored, renewed, reclaimed, revived. Let's just close with the benediction. 
And my brothers and sisters, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you inheritance among all who to sanctify. To him be glory both now and forever. And the church say amen. amen. And since we have our praise team with us today, we can just sing a verse of let the church say amen. Minister Baker, praise. 